may we please remain standing at the time when the desire of the Father was fulfilled and he had determined to extend his influence beyond the domain called heaven. He deployed his son to a territory called earth. And what qualified that son to be given earth as his territory to dominate and spread the influence of his father was DNA. The father knew that because of this DNA, though it is my son going, but the DNA in the son assures that it is me there present. This morning, a massive privilege has been afforded each and every one of us in this house this morning. We are about to receive ministration from a son who is a son. Deployed on an ambassadorial mission beyond the borders of Zimbabwe. He has done a sterling job and he continues to do so. And the measurement of the excellence of the work is in its similarity to the work of the Father. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, a package is about to be handed over to you and I. So when the Father speaks, us, the children, we execute and we do as the Father has said. So prepare yourself this morning to receive ministration from a man who is stationed in Johannesburg, South Africa. The man of God, a son extraordinaire, Pastor Ara Makandiwa. Thank you. Thank you. If that was for me, we can do better for Jesus. I said, if that was for me, we can do better for Jesus. At some point, at some point, I thought you were talking about somebody else. I didn't know it was me. <laughs> but thank you so much, Pastor Simba, for the kind words. Uh, they mean a lot. Thank you so much, and also thank you for preparing the way. I, I believe I will be able to execute the plan of God and the will of my Father today. <clears throat> we may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and as we do so, just share a smile or a high five to your neighbor. <clears throat> Thank you so much. 
I don't know who can assist me with that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I, I promise not to be here for a long time. I, I promise. And I promise to keep my promise. <laughs> Thank you so much. So before we get into today's business, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my father and my mother in the Lord. The men and women of God who have done so much on me, who have worked on me, I am a product of their work, I am a product of their hands. So much has been done on me. So much has been done on my wife too. So much has been done on you, on all of us. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. So considering what has been done on me, it is much already. So less can be expected from me. Much is also expected from me. And much is also expected from us as a church, considering that we have been given much by the Lord. So in everything that we do, let's make sure that we do much. But that is what is expected from us. So I want to thank the men and women of God, my father and my mother, Prophet I. Makandiwa and Mama Ruth Makandiwa. for making me the man that I am proud of. Yes, they've made me to become a man that I wanted to be, and I'm still becoming that man. He's, he's the only man who has paid it all. Of course, not on the Calvary, but in terms of discipleship, in terms of following Christ, in terms of submission to our Lord Jesus Christ, he has done all that is worth emulating and following. And as we follow his footsteps and as he follows Christ, we continue to thank God for him and for him. And uh, there is a lot that is required when one follows God. It's not a small job to be the head of such an organization such a ministry, it's not a small job. It's not easy. It takes a lot for a man to follow Christ, to follow God. There are prizes to be paid. We just preach about it and we take it lightly, even when Jesus called his disciples. It wasn't as easy as we preach. When they decided to follow him, they paid the price. From that day on, that's when they ceased to live their own lives. But they started living the life of the calling. And this is what has happened even on our father. He last lived his life long back the day he decided to minister to you and me. That's when he stopped living his own life and is living the life of the calling. And that's the price that he has paid. And he was paying that price for you and me. So we are here because of them. We are here because of their grace. And I want to say once again, thank you, my father. Thank you, my mother, for this opportunity. Even if I'm too close now, I think I've done justice. But this is one opportunity that I know a lot of people are praying for, not only here, but from all over the world. Bishops, prophets, they all dream to be here, but I can proudly say their dream is my reality. I'm here today <laughs> as they continue to dream. <laughs> so I don't take it lightly 
because it's not a small platform. It's not a small platform. I honor it. I honor this altar. It's a righteous altar. It's a holy altar. And I thank you, my father, for trusting me with your, with your altar. Uh, I know there is a lot that we have been expecting today from the Lord through our father. And my prayer was I need to stand in my father's shoes very well so that I deliver exactly what he would have delivered if he was here. So I come in the power and authority of being sent. I did not come alone. It was my father who said, go and do it. So I'm here to do that. So, so even if you weren't expecting it, I have been given to you and you to me, so we're going to be together today. <laughs> we just have to accept <laughs> But let's quickly get into today's business and see what the Lord has for us. Thank you so much, Pastor Simba, for sharing very well. Thank you so much. Second Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 7. Second Corinthians, it will be good if you can stand for the reading of the word. Book of Second Corinthians four verse seven. Sorry, Pastor, before I forget, Joe Beck family, thank you so much. Johannes Beck family, thank you so much for your support. Yes, thank you so much for support. I had some flu on the way just to come and support me and stand with us as we minister. Thank you so much, guys. We love you. Thank you. Okay, second Corinthians chapter four from verse seven. <clears throat> Verse 7, mm. but we have this treasure in earthen vessels mm. that the excellency of the power may be of God mm. and not of us. Mm. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Mm. We are perplexed, but not in despair, mm. persecuted but not forsaken. I want you to highlight that part. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Highlight that part. Cast down, but not destroyed. Thank you. Bless you, Pastor, for reading well. You may be seated. <clears throat> so before we get deep into the scripture, there is something that I would want you to understand about the treasure Paul is talking about. Some might want to think that the treasure was referring to was the word of God. Some, they say it was the light that was created from the beginning. Because if you read verse 6, it talks about the light that God created in the beginning and he shines the same light through us. So there are so many uh, school of thoughts around that area but my, my, my conviction is that Paul was referring to the Son of God. He was referring to Christ himself. Because even if we argue that it was the word of God that he was talking about, even if you argue that it was the light that we are, he was talking about, still, light and the word that they are referring to, they have a meaning in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they all, as Jesus is the sum total of all these things. So it is safe to say the treasure he's talking about is Jesus Christ. But now the Bible is saying we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. And from that part, I want you to see the wisdom of God. The treasure that is that valuable, he has been placed in a very, one of the weakest material ever made. We are made of clay and God in his wisdom had to place such valuable 
treasure in the very weakest material just to shame the devil. In this, I see the wisdom of God. Because you see, you look at the banks or the vaults that keeps money. They are well fortified. You look at the size of security around it. You can actually tell the amount that is inside by the security outside. But as of this treasure, it is inside the clay pots. We are made of clay, but inside there is treasure that is greater than the clay. God is not foolish, but he has done it just to show the devil that he is foolish. <laughs> he wanted to prove to the devil that the devil is foolish. Now we have this treasure in earthen vessel, and the reason being that the excellence of the power be of God, not of us. <laughs> if you look at clay, if you look at yourself, we are very weak. We become sick. We die as men, right? But inside there is treasure that is greater than the clay that is outside. So for us to understand the following verse, which says, we are troubled on every side, but we are not in distress. This is the reason why we are not in distress. As clay, we are troubled, but as clay carrying the treasure, we are not distressed. The treasure within us might not protect us from the trouble, but it protects us from distress. That's the reason why you can get sick. You get sick because you are made of clay, but you don't die because of the treasure that is stored within you. Are you here with me? We go through trouble and pulses on every side. Trouble around. It's, it is because we are made of clay. The devil is allowed. That's why the Bible says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. It can be fashioned, why? Because we are made of clay. But the prosperity of it is hindered by the treasure within us. Are you with me? That's the reason why we needed to have this treasure in us. If you are here and you are sick right now, the reason why you are going to recover is the revelation of the treasure within you. What our father does every time when he comes here is because he's able to do that, even healing the sick, he's able to do that because he has got a revelation of the treasure within. He knows how to use the treasure, not the clay. He knows how to use the gold that is within, not the clay that is made of. <laughs> and the part that I've said you must highlight, it says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. Be seated. Verse 9. Mm. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Persecuted, but not forsaken. So confusing. Because the devil has made us to believe that if you are persecuted, it's a sign that you are forsaken. But Paul is saying the reason why we are persecuted is because we are made of clay. When the devil looks at us, he thinks we look like every other person. But to his surprise, when he touches us, then the treasure within us manifests. Then he realizes that these people are not alone. God designed it like an ambush. They touch you because you are made of clay, but they will not destroy you because we have treasure within you. Just a small quick survey. Uh, I'm not condemning anyone, but I once had this feeling, so I just want to see if I've got uh, um, friends here. Is there anyone here at some point you felt forsaken? Not just by people, but even by God himself. Hey. 
<laughs> Even me, there is a time when I felt like that. But until God gave me a revelation, and the Holy Spirit told me that there is not even a day, even a second, I left you alone. There is not even a day you were abandoned. But where is this feeling coming from? Thank God, it's just a feeling. But it is at that point of feeling for a second that the devil is defeating us. I'm here to announce to you that when you felt for a second, it was just a feeling. Because feeling for a second is not being for a second. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. So persecution is not falling in the category, in the bracket of being forsaken. Persecuted is not a sign that you, have, you are forsaken by God. No. No. Because he promised that he would never forsake you. He promised. But there are moments in circumstances, things that you went through, might be death, sickness, where you felt, if God was by my side, I was not supposed to go through, through this. This is reality. This is reality. Almost all of us, we felt like that. There was a situation that he hit you. People hit you to a point where you felt God is no longer on my side. But surprisingly, if I rem I'm to remind you, that day you prayed, to a God that you felt had forsaken you. And the other, on the other side, you are feeling forsaken, but on the other side, you still feel like praying to the God, the same God who has left. What made you feel he's hearing you if he had left? I'm showing you what the devil is trying to do with you. At the end of this service, we are going to pray, but from a place of knowledge, knowing that the God that we are praying to is here with me. He has never left. If there is a time when I felt like God was not with me, it was me who had left. Adam, Adam, where are you? But if you ask Adam privately, he will, t he will tell you that I feel forsaken. I feel like God has left me. But surprisingly, God is the one looking for Adam. <laughs> I'm not saying this to hurt your feelings, but I'm saying it to correct your feelings. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Pastor, can you read for me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5? Hebrews 13, 5. Mm. Let your conversation be without covetousness, mm -hmm. and be content with such things as ye have. Mm -hmm. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And his word is true. It's indestructible. It cannot be broken. If he said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, don't allow you even lack of things to suggest that God has left you. I'll give you an example. There is, there is a passage in the Bible, should be Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says, then Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted. When he was there, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. At the end of these days, he was hungered. Then the tempter came and he, and he said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. The devil is so cunning that if you are not careful, you make you feel like God has left you. Being the son of God and God being my father, what does that have to do with having bread to eat? 
It was not about the miracle of turning stones into bread, but he's saying, he's trying to suggest that if he's really your father and you are the son, why are you hungry? So he's saying, prove to the world that you are not forsaken by turning these stones into bread. And Jesus is saying, I will not use bread to confirm the presence of God. Having bread or not having bread is not a sign that God is not there or is there. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. Right? Yes. So having plenty, it's a sign that we have discovered, we found the kingdom. But it's not a sign that not having it, it's not a sign that we don't have God. If Plenty is a sign that we have God, which means at some point Egypt had more God than Canaan. Because there is a time when Canaan was hit by famine and they had to migrate from, from Canaan to Egypt. Not looking for God, but looking for food. But still in that state, they never felt forsaken. Number two, he took him to the pinnacle on top of the temple and he said, throw yourself down. For the Bible says, he shall give charge to the angels concerning you. And they will grab you in their hands, lest you dash your foot on a stone. Hmm. <laughs> He's saying, prove that you are the son of God. Why? Because he promised that he will never forsake you. So throw yourself down. But the devil, the Jesus himself, is very smart. He knows, and he knows when the devil comes, and he knows how cunning he is. As much as God promised that he will give charge to the angels to grab me, but God never said, if you throw yourself down. He said, if you fall, he will give charge to the angels, not when I throw myself down. So you don't drink poison because he said you shall drink anything and you will not die. You don't, don't deliberately do that. It will kill you. You are driving 240, 260 just because he said he will never forsake you. My brother, in that zone, you are forsaken. He doesn't support recklessness. <laughs> so Jesus knows that he will give charge to the angels when I'm falling, not when I throw myself down. <laughs> to prove to you that I am right, there is a time when they were pushing him down the mountain and he walked through him. Why? Because he said, I'll give charge to the angels concerning you. When it happens accidentally, you shall walk or tread upon scorpions and serpents. When they meant you to do so, I shall manifest. They will not bite you. Then the treasure within you will manifest. So we confirmed that all of us at some point, we felt forsaken. There is a scripture that we want us to look at. Psalm chapter 37, verse 25. Psalms chapter 37, verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. Mm. I have been young mm. and now am old. Mm. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Some might say, no, David is saying this from the palace. He didn't start from the palace. Same David who is saying, I was young, now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, was once a vagabond. Knowing that the throne belongs to me, but he was always on the run. He never, his, he never enjoyed his youthful moments. He never. But still, in those moments, he never felt forsaken. 
For three successive years, David was punished for the sin that Saul had committed. So he had killed the Gibeonites, and in the time of David, they were struck by famine for three successive years. Until David inquired from the Lord, and God said, it is because of Saul who killed Gibeonites. Correct this error, otherwise you continue in famine. But still, in that famine, he's still writing, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. There is a time David is coming back with his men. Huh? And they are approaching Ziklag. All they can see is smoke. His city is in fire. His city is taken down. Imagine the feeling. Imagine the feeling. Everything that gave meaning to the life of David is taken away. The wives are gone. The children are gone. And he is there, but from that point still, he is writing that I have never seen the righteous forsaken. What he is trying to tell us is, no matter how much they take things from you, it doesn't fall in the category of being forsaken. It's not a sign that you are forsaken. I'm here to tell you, child of God, that being sick is not a sign that God has forsaken you. You come from work during the day. You get home. You're sick like. And the only thing you are expecting to find is taken. There is no peace in the house. There is no joy in the house. What do you do? What's your, that's the moment that if you are not careful, the devil will come in and say, if God is with you, why is the is it like down? Imagine from that point, you are praying a, a prayer of a beggar. You are praying a prayer of a slave. But the Bible says, then David was distressed. <laughs> Yet, Second Corinthians said, we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. The reason why David, is clear on that scripture, the reason why David was distressed is because people wanted to stone him, not Ziklag, that the Ziklag was bent. 1 Samuel 36. And David was greatly distressed, mm. for the people spake of stoning him, mm. because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. The David who is discouraged is a different David. He's made of clay. The David whose ziklag is bent is made of clay. But there is another David who encouraged a David who is broken. And the Bible says David, this David was not another person. It was not his pastor. But it was the treasure within him. The God within David, he manifested and encouraged the David that is made of clay. Verse 8, if I'm not mistaken of the same book, first, Second Corinthians chapter 4, it says, Though our bodies are perishing every day, but I am glad that the inner inward man, the spirit man, is renewed day by day. Jesus. There is nothing you can do to a renewed spirit. Even if the body is dying, as long as your spirit can stand, nothing can be done to the body. Nothing can be done to the body. If I'm quoting it right, on the same book, there is a part where it talks about the life of Jesus being evident or us living the life of Christ. We have to manifest the life of Christ. Verse 10, mm. always bearing about in the body mm. the dying of the Lord Jesus, mm. that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest mm. in our body. The life of Jesus must, must be made manifest in this body of clay. Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? So the devil has brought you to this place where you felt forsaken. It's not only your relationship with God, but every other relationship around you is now in mess because you felt the devil made you to feel what you felt on that day. I wish you knew how your husband loves you. I wish you knew how your wife loves you. But you need to investigate where this feeling is coming from. <laughs> there are people that we have painted black. Why? Because there is a day you greeted them and they did not respond. All you got from that is Vanovaira. You never took time to investigate what was happening. People are going through a lot. People are suffering. The day you greeted me, I did not hear you. But it doesn't mean now look at how you've messed up every relationship around you because the devil made you feel like you are neglected. You are rejected. But are you really rejected? I was hoping a certain lady in South Africa she came, she raised her hand during, during the service and said, man of God, help me. I feel like my family doesn't like me, especially where I am married. I feel like even my mother-in-law doesn't like me. So I feel like I've got this spirit of rejection in me. Please help me, deliver me from this spirit. Then I said to her, who is rejecting who here? Then she said, it is them rejecting me. Then I said, so who has got the spirit of rejection? <laughs> so be careful on what the devil make you feel. <laughs> we are being destroyed at this point of feeling. People are going through a lot, guys. It's good to respond when you are greeted. But I still say, guys, you are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to But that's not all that you are seeking to do from the time. There are other home. things to think about. You are so sensitive that you want everyone to be smiling at you. Are you money? There is a dimension that we get to of growth where people are focusing on developing themselves, where people are focusing on growing. To the extent that not being greeted can't upset you. Ah, my, my husband did not finish the food that I cooked today. I don't know what's happening. Maybe he doesn't like. Wrong feeling. Wrong feeling. The devil is catching you at that point. It's a point of feeling. Feeling rejected is not being rejected. Investigate and find out where the feeling is coming from. The devil is so cunning. So I'm here to tell you that... <laughs> There is a level that our father has been trying to push and pushing us so hard. Some of us, we are there. Some of us, we are getting there. <laughs> you know, it's very stubborn to tell people and, and it's scary at the same time. You can't stand up and tell people that you are God. Though it is written in your law, but to say you are God's, there is a reason why it is written like that in the law. Though it has got a small letter G, which means we are gods that depend on another god who is superior to these gods. But there is a reason why God wanted us to be gods. Hmm. There is a reason. Why? Because there are situations that we are going to be dealing with that requires gods, not men. There is a level of sickness that is going to require a God, not a man.
is it not written in your law? Jesus said, uh, John chapter 10, verse 34. They came to him because he had said, I, me and my father are one. And they considered that blasphemy. And they said, but how can you equate yourself to God? How can you be one with God Almighty? And he said, you're having problems with me saying I'm the son of God. <laughs> In your law, you are not just sons of God, but you are gods. Mm. It was Jesus who said so. Mm. Huh? It was Jesus who said so. So the reason why he said you are gods, <laughs> he's trying to tell you that when you are attacked, it is not the man that is made of clay that fights the battles. It is the God that is in you that manifests. That's why we have this treasure in earthen vessels. It manifests when you are in trouble. When you are troubled, when you are persecuted, the God in you will manifest. We might not agree to this. Why? Because we are used to this culture of when something goes wrong, we go to God. Why? Because we depend on him, right? Yes. But God in his initial plan, wanted Adam to sort everything out on his own. He wanted Adam to be the God of this earth. Am I right? Yes. That's why he never named animals. He never gave them names. He brought them to a God called Adam and said, name them. Adam did not go back to God and say, so which names must I give them? He understood the mission that I'm doing this not, a, not as a man made of clay, but as a God. So there are situations where the God in you, the God that is you, has to rise to the occasion and deal with certain matters. Do you know that it was not God who said to, uh, to David, pursue them and overtake and do this and it wasn't, it wasn't God. It was David who gave God the idea. It was David who knelt down and prayed and gave God the idea and he said, shall I pursue them? Will I overtake them? Will I recover? And God said, it's a good idea. Go ahead. 1 Samuel 38. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Uh -huh. Shall I overtake them? Uh -huh. And he answered him, Pursue, uh -huh. for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. This is a God consulting with a superpower. <laughs> you know my way, you order my steps. Shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Then he agrees with another God. And God was never threatened by Moses. He said, you shall be a God to Pharaoh. Why? Because the problems of this level, if you approach them as a man made of clay, they'll break you. They'll break you. But approach Pharaoh as a God. Why? Because in his town, he's considered a God. He's not just a Pharaoh. We are not here on earth to fight people, but we fight principalities. We fight against gods, but not as men made of clay. Look at this. He, the book of, book, of, book of Psalm declares that you are gods, but it goes on to say, but you shall die like men. Huh? What it means is, the only thing that we are allowed to do as men is die. But living, we live as gods. <laughs> Every other thing that we do, <laughs> I, I'm saying this from a background. But why? Because the world itself has bought into this idea, into this revelation that God wanted us to be gods. Right? Now we have aeroplanes that we are flying. Imagine if we had people with the mentality that we have of consulting God every time. God coming, coming. Were we ever going to have aeroplanes flying? It was just two boys who thought of... And 
I was reading some weeks ago that the idea of making a plane was inspired by a toy. Their father bought a toy that they would toss in the air and it would fly and come down. That's where the idea came from. It was not from God, it was from a toy. <laughs> now they are the gods of the air. They dominate the air. <laughs> if you want to fly to go to South Africa right now, in no time you will be there. It was the work of another man like you and me. There was no special God for that. <laughs> On the seventh day, he rested. But when he rested, he had not made cars. He had not made buses. He had not made aeroplanes. Why? Because in his mind, God is saying, I have created a God who will continue to create on my behalf. Jesus. What did he say to the ground that he created? Me and you were just like that ground. He said, and let the ground produce after its own kind. He did not create the kind that the ground produced. It was his creation that then created. The chair that you are sitting on, is it God who created that chair? A man like you. Imagine, we are still at a point where we are going to God. Is, May God make but we, are, we have people, people who are dreaming of making those tomatoes. How do we make them without planting? How do we make them? In a minute, a tomato is out. Is it to We are still praying so that our marketplace, we are able to be successful in the market. How are we going to be the light of the world if we are the end users? Doesn't your Bible say in the book of Isaiah, arise and shine? There is a reason why those words come in that order. You rise first and shine. You don't shine and rise. For your light, yes, come. So no matter how good you are at football, if you are good in Mzarabani there, <laughs> you shine at low places. No one will see you. And the Bible says, who can light a candle and put it under a bushel? We rise first, then we shine so that our light can be seen. We are dominating the industry. They must hear. Our names must be written everywhere. When they talk about manufacturing, our names must be filtered in. Let's be eating bread that we make ourselves. That's the dimension of gods. We create. <laughs> we get ideas from the superpower. Then we work on the ideas. Look at David. People, even the world, is going to appreciate you. Only when you bring down a giant. Do you know how many people were there when David was anointed? Just a handful. Few people. Right? And there were no songs written on that day. They did not compose songs just because uh, David was anointed. Which means the world is not waiting for anointing oil upon your... They, they are not scared of your anointing oil. But until David works on the grass and bring down the giant, then the world is ready to raise his head and say, now we are talking. We come here just to be empowered by Samuel to go and face our giants. Our father is coming here every time. Now and then, empowering us, anointing us. But the devil is not scared at that level. It is only when we convert that oil into a sling and a stone. And we say to the uncircumcised Philistine, you come to me. With all the weapons, but I come to you in the name of the Lord that you blaspheme. But this was not the name of the Lord. It was a sling, but he calls it the name. <laughs> so we are going out in the same spirit with the understanding that we have treasure within us.
Though we are made of clay, to no dona here and there, to no foira here and there, to no to here and there. Why? Because like we are made of clay, but there is a time because of the treasure that is within us. We keep on rising. We keep on rising because of the treasure within us. <laughs> there are moments of mistakes. There are moments of falling. It is given because you shall die like men. You are made of clay. <laughs> but there is always a rising. There is always a rising. There is always a rising. My father has sent me with this one assignment. Make sure that they rise. Make sure that they rise. Make sure that they rise. Let the inner man be renewed today. Rise. 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 Rise and shine. No matter how good you are, if you don't rise first, no one is going to see your light. No one is going to see your light. Jesus knew where you were sending them. I'm sending you a sheep among his wolves. But <laughs> be as wise as a serpent. The same serpent that is against Jesus is saying, but there is something that you need to extract from the serpent. Not everything. <laughs> the serpent is wise, but make sure you are as harmless as a dove, but be wise as a serpent. He knew where he's sending you to. I'm telling you guys, some of you are too nice for this world. You are too nice. You are too nice. Some of these guys, when they are going for what they want, they don't care who is on the way. They don't care. They don't care. It's amazing even as, as Christians how we like the scripture. We says the race is not to the swift. I don't know what it says. The race is not to the swift, uh, the battle to the strong or uh, food to the wise. We like that scripture so much. We feel motivated when we read that scripture. But do you know there is something hidden in that scripture? When he says the rest is not to the swift, there is something the, the, the preacher is tell, trying to tell us that it's not always the fastest runner who wins the rest. Sometimes something will happen. A technicality will happen and he fails. And the one who doesn't run fast can win. But you only win when you participate. But a single ask you one of the stars like a nyoro. So if there's an announcement that there stands being given to people, uh, but the enemy. when one fails in a race, let me give you an example that is close to, to, to us. Now there is there is a tournament going on. Tiger was the one we know is playing golf right now. Right? I'm finishing. He's playing golf right now. But the others who are playing with him, they know how good he is. Huh? They know at any time they will never beat him. So, but they still continue to compete and play. And those people, what they are waiting for is just one small mistake. They know the fair, fair. On an ordinary day. Under normal circumstances. But if there is going to image a winner who is not Tiger Woods, he, is, he has become a winner. Why? Because he was participating. Now this scripture is relevant to that person because he was there. So don't quote that scripture if you are not participating. The rest is not to the swift. Number two becomes number one if number one falls down. So if the participants loses then the spectators don't win <laughs> but I'm saying this now so that you understand 
that you need to be involved. Be part of what is happening. Be part of what is happening. And this good thing join. I share a cure. I'm to join. I want to I'm to But we are gods. We are the light of the world. We are there to dominate. When my father comes here and declare, "Help us from the east. Help us from the south. Help us from the north." Help us from the west. He's declaring, he's sending us. But I want you to take that declaration and personalize it. Make it yours. Convert it and say, my father, I want to be that one helper from the west. I don't want to be helped from the west, but I want to be that helper from the west. This is an altar of champions. I because it's made of clay. Don't allow your body to deceive you. It but God made sure that the ark is made of acacia wood. He made sure that it is coated with gold. Even the lid covering the, the, the altar was made of gold, representing the divinity, and the wood representing humanity. He made sure that there is a spirit baking up the body. Why? Because it gets tired. It gets tired. It's, it gets tired. So you are going home with this understanding. You are saying, I've tried this for a long time. But I'm failing to achieve what I want to achieve. And I'm getting tired. My wife, I'm getting tired. But it's time. Now we have this revelation that we are not alone. We are not forsaken. There is treasure within us. You can touch acacia wood all you want. You can touch gold all you want but don't touch gold mixed with acacia wood don't touch acacia wood mixed with gold you are untouchable not because you are what no but there is a treasure within you and this treasure can manifest any time you are a student, you are writing exams, and you can't remember what you read. You don't know answers. Black out completely. You tell yourself, this is normal because I'm made of clay. But where is the God of my father? Where is the God of my father? Then let the treasure manifest. It will remind you everything. If only you can do this with this mind that we are gods. We are gods. We are here today. We shall pray. And we are praying to convince ourselves and even remind ourselves that we are not people of low levels. We rise anytime we want to rise. Not by our power, but that the excellence of the power be of God. Jesus. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? We are going out. We are going to dominate every area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There is something that you like so much. Develop it. Develop it. Me, I've got a challenge. As long as Messi, as long as Ronaldo, have got two legs like me, two hands like me, why do they play so well than me? The only reason, let it, the reason be that it's because I've never tried it. That's the only reason they play better than me because I've never tried it. What was so special about these guys? But they realized the blessing of dominating. They knew what God really wanted with men. We call him what? God, 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 God. Greatest of all time. And is greatest of all time. They don't care there is God in heaven, but this one is the greatest of all time. <laughs> Become a God in your area.
Sounds blasphemous, right? But is it not written in your law that you are God's face? Let's be on our feet. Thank you. We thank our Father for the program that is coming, that is ahead of us, the Youth Conference. <clears throat> I don't know how the revelation came and how, I don't know how you got this, uh, Pastor, but People will come from there being lit on fire. <laughs> but my challenge, Pastor, is the reason why some of most of the times Tatarika Neku try with a Tatas at a Dita D is because the reason why we struggled is because we began managing even my business just not on body chamber. Some businesses require you to be youthful. Like if you want to start playing soccer right now. <laughs> I've said, you no longer right? can. Yes. But my father is saying, let's catch them. Yeah. We have a lot in line planned for our young people. My desire was to be like Jesus. Huh? At 33, he said, it is finished. I'm done. <laughs> but because we are renewed, even the years that we are eaten, they can be restored. So we are going there to be ignited, to be empowered. But these are our children that are going there. When they come, they are well molded. There are things that you can teach your children. Our Father is there to guide us. Our Father. So all we need to do is just to support them. Support them with everything. Support them financially. We want them to be as comfortable as possible. So we are going to raise funds just for that. Okay? We raise funds just for that. Everything that involves our Father, He has our blessing in it. So I'm looking for people who are wise, who knows what to do. Do you know, uh, Pastor Simba, that there is a scripture? Uh, we all know the scripture. Hannah prayed for a child and he said, if you give me, I will give him back to you. Huh? This is also an exercise that we are doing during this conference. Allowing our children to go, we are saying, you have given us these children, but we are giving them back to you. But there came a time when Eli prayed and he said, God, these are the words that are written in your Bible. For the loan that Hannah gave to you, can you pay back? Can you pay? Can you remember? It was, it was a loan that Hannah gave to God. You know how many kids Hannah received in place of one? Five. So when God is paying back, he pays with interest. Five, one. You know, but imagine. 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 So there is a level of giving that until it becomes a loan to God, it's not yet giving. It has to be considered a loan. That when God is paying back, He will multiply it. So we are going to give. 
and we need to consider the amount that we are giving. You don't just dig in your pocket. When you are buying eggs, you don't just take any amount and buy eggs. There is an amount, right? And your children, they know how much is needed there. Our pastor here knows. Our pastor, Pastor Wenger knows how much is needed there. So we want this to be a success. It's not, it won't be a success if we don't participate. So let's help our children. Let's contribute. And in this, there is our blessing. There is our blessing. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? And are you ready to give? And after all this, do not forget where you belong. Do not forget. As you walk out of this place, you must know, I've got treasure within me. Even if you're feeling sick right now, I command the treasure within you to manifest. Let it protect the clay. Let the treasure heal the vessel. Jesus. You are going through hardships. You are going through troubles. Let the treasure within you manifest and protect you. It says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. And my father told us that, how, told us how difficult it is for Jesus to leave you. Even for you to lose him, he's always with you. He will never forsake you. So you look at yourself. There is something that you so much desire to have, but you don't have it. It's not a sign that he is not with you. No. You are a God. Make your way. Work your way towards it. Give God ideas. Give God ideas. Give God ideas. Tiwa nuari wane fungwa tziri kumbere tzikuti mwari ndiyanto zota ah mira mira mru kumanya mira 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 mru kumanya yes 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 are we ready to give I'm expecting to see an offering in your in your or we do it this way I don't know how we can do it so we can finish on time but how much are giving hundred dollars how many are giving? Hundred dollars. Let me see. Hundred dollars is going to us. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, please come forward. If you are giving hundred dollars, please come forward. I'm sorry. I finished on time, right? I think I finished on time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you my, so much, sir. Thank you so much. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Let's support this program. Let's support this program. Let's support. Let's come and give $100 going towards our youth uh, conference. Come, come. Even if you're in the overflow, please come inside. Come inside. Come inside. Pangupacho wa ucha peguti wa uongoji da kupa, but sometimes, you know, there must be something for me in this. Sometimes you don't give because you felt like it, but you just suspect that there's something in it for you. Yes, especially as parents. We need this more than our children. Yes, because at the end of the day, again, where those yes. same ones will be crying over the same children. Ask me, I'm out there. I know what happens with our children. There are cases that I deal with Yes, I'm there in South Africa. There are cases that we deal with. Zevana Vichkoro, Varuma University. Never, if you have got a child at the university, Musafi Makawa Kanganwa, please. Don't forget your children when you send them out to universities. In South Africa, there are so many ways to survive. You can get to the point. Muri, muri kure. 
Zoguta una zwa nukwa nisa kuita. Bati mwarichete. Imagine them coming from this conference. The devil will not mess up with them. He will not. They will know the way they should go. They will focus on building themselves. Yes. So let's continue supporting such programs. Yes, $50. Please come. $50. $50. I know I might be taking time, but it is good for, for us. It is good for us. It is good for us. Does the person sitting next to you look for a second? <laughs> At the end of the day, you realize that ah, it was all a lie from the devil. Yes. Then I can see what I've said. They have truly been forsaken. You are yet to meet You are yet to meet anyone who's ever been forsaken <laughs> by God. They don't look like you. Yes, they don't look like you. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Even if you're in the overflow, you can come inside, but if it's too far, we have got altars there. If it's too far for you, we have got altars there. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. We are supporting the work. We are supporting the work. We are supporting the work. If you ask Pastor Simba here and Mama, they will tell you how difficult it is to bring one, uh, young people uh, under one roof for Jesus. For every other thing, it's easy, but not for Jesus. I don't know how our father does it, but <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Even the response that we got, it's amazing. It's amazing. So you don't want your child to be told, you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that. This is where you can see Yes. Isn't that so, parents? Jesus. 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 Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Don't worry, we have all the time. We have all the time to do this. We have all the time to do this. We have all the time to do this. Remember, it's already Sunday, a day dedicated to the Lord. From morning till evening is dedicated to the Lord, nothing else. So, Ten dollars. Ten dollars and no ten zigere. Now Jesus will not eat a shit. Jesus, all things will work out. Yes. There is a, a culture that we need uh, to work on. <clears throat> okay, we 
works do we have more people coming five dollars five dollars five dollars Yes, press the person on the side of you and ask them, by the way, how much does your breakfast cost in general? Uh, breakfast Because breakfast. Because But if you want to be honest, you are going to realize could you panos opera day? Maria only go ashanti sapa zunzwa ono gono to so kanganwa yaka wanda kupfura mari ono da ushanti sapa na mwana ende nyika ina basa ne mari iyoyo ino ngo ne basa ne dollar ono so unza uchechi but all problem do this at nena so that's the problem so make sure you when you are giving to god you give all you give all you don't hold back, especially when it is in your power to do so. Thank you so much. We have people coming from the overflow. Please come inside. Not that the altar there is different, but you just need a few of the inside. It's warmer in here than outside. <clears throat> yeah, so you need you need that fuel. Uh, dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, even fifty cents. Don't be left out. Don't be left out. Don't be left out. So on this, I'm expecting everyone to come. So if the person next to you didn't come for any other category, maybe they were waiting for this moment. You say that you won't forsake me. You walk beside me, and that is all that matters. You never leave me. You say that you won't forsake me. You walk beside me, and that is all that matters. You never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You walk beside me. And that is all the matter. You never leave me. You never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You walk beside me. You beside me. And that is all the matter. You never leave me. That is all that matters. 
please, if you are watching us online, we are together, and there are account details that are showing on your screen. If you are watching us online, there are account details from all of them. Use those account details now. Use those account details now. If you are watching from outside, you are watching us online, use those details on the screen. We are together. We pray together. We give together. We pray together. We give together. So as we, as we do so, if you know that you, you once promised God something, you need to quickly make a follow-up and, and fulfill your promise. So Pastor Simba, if you can help us, please, uh, as we are closing, I can see we are just left with a few people that are still coming. So as we are wrapping up this, can you read for us Ecclesiastes chapter 5? It's going to help us in a big way. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm not going to preach on this, but it's just a reminder. It's just a reminder, chapter 5, from verse 4. From verse 4, if you have New Living Translation, you can help us for better understanding, but King James would do also. <clears throat> uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, if you know you once promised God something, don't delay in making a follow-up and fulfill your pledges. In, in any area, in any area, in any area. Ecclesiastes 5. Uh, pay, pay attention, please, and listen to this. From uh, verse 4. Uh, this is the NLT. Thank you. Thank you, sir. W when you make a promise to God, mm. don't delay in following through. Mm. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Mm. Don't let your mouth make you sin. And don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger that the promise you made was a mistake. I made a mistake very sorry when I promised to give so much. Do not give that excuse. And he says, do not make your mouth sin. This one sin that we don't consider much, but it is indeed a sin. When you promise God something, quickly make a follow-up on it and fulfill your pledges. Even now, if you know that you have a pledge that you made even five years back, just make sure you clear that up. Okay? It's just a good culture. It's just a good culture. I'm not saying this to scare you or even to curse anyone. It's just a good culture. Is it not good? Yes. Because look at how you are strict with God. You want him to fulfill all the promises that he promised you. But look at the few promises that you made to him. It's just one and another there that you, you keep. So let's keep this as a culture. Let's keep this as a culture. Whenever you promise that I'm going to do this for God, quickly make a follow-up. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for gracing us. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the day. Through your servant, through your, the Father that you have given us, we have received enough for today. And thank you for the daily bread. And Father, we pray for our Father and our Mother that you have given us. Keep them for us. Protect them for us. Continue to equip them and even fortify them for us. We are safe, Lord. We can confirm that we are safe under his stewardship. We are safe, and your servant has been faithful to all of us. He gives us more than what we need. And Father, thank you for giving us our prophet as our father. And thank you, Lord, for everyone who is in this house. As we are going home now, we go in your blessings. Let your angels go with us, protect us, uplift us. 
those who are getting tired, let this treasure within you energize you. Let this treasure within you give you power to move on and go on. And I command you to rise. I command you to rise. You have fallen because you are made of clay, but you, arise by the reason, you rise by the reason of the treasure within you. The treasure that is more valuable than any other treasure under the sun. His name is Jesus Christ. We conquer by his name. We rise by his name. We defeat the enemy by his name. There is nothing that shall rise against us. There is no giant that shall stand before you. You shall declare, even during this week, you shall declare with your mouth and let the treasure do the work. Over to you, sir. Wow, let's give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Thank you, thank you so much. Let us put our hands together once more for the men and women of God. Thank you so much, men and women of God, for taking time to minister to us. Jonas Begiri Kujikawa Kuman. Joe Begiri satisfied. They are having top quality stuff. Now, we just also want to thank the men of God for the exercise that we've just been through. We were actually speaking about it before the service. I don't know how he picked it up, but of course, he's a prophet and then he ran with it. We have a serious deficit for our youth program. We have a very serious deficit. So this time around, we can't go to the other branches to ask them for, to help us because they will, they've also got their needs to take care of. They are sending teams to the conference so this exercise will continue next week. Please let us support our children. We know more than 70% of the youth that we have is currently unemployed. So the onus is on us, the parents, to make good their conference. So please let us help them, let us help them, let us help them. Next week, the same process will go through again to make good their program. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And he said, I have come that you might have. Don't forget to pass through the altar as you depart. Thank you so much, man of God. Pina, 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 pina,